Certainly we honor the spirit of the Lord on today. We praise God for blessing us to be here yet again, to hear his word, to to understand what God has for us in his word. God is just a blessing and God is just awesome. Because when you look through his words and you study them and you research them and you look back on them, as we often say, we find some, some things in there that, that God just reveals to us how he operates and what he does, amen, for, for his people. And on today, we're just going to look at a, a, a story or, or something that happened in the, the book of Exodus. It's in the Old Testament. We're going to look and see, amen, what uh, God has for us in his word on today. And in that, uh, as you turn into uh, Exodus, we, we find that uh, the author of this uh, book is, is giving credit to, to Moses for uh, writing this and, and bringing forth what God had given him. And we find that in uh, today's uh, lesson, we're going to see how God dealt with Moses and how God uh, began to move and how God began to actually uh, reveal himself, amen, to, to, to Moses. And, and we see this here and we find it, uh, and, and I'm not going to read the entire uh, book of Exodus. I, I ask that you do that for yourself, but I just want to give us uh, some, some background or some, some foundation for where we're going uh, on today. Because uh, uh, portions of our, our, our scriptures that we're going to key in on is in Exodus uh, 3, uh, chapter uh, verse 4, and, and also verse 14. And then we're going to jump down to chapter 34, and we're going to see uh, how God uh, dealt with his, uh, his servant, which was now Moses. Now, now, in here, we have to understand that at the end of chapter 1 in Exodus... And again, this is just some uh, laying down some some footing, some some uh, foundation for us to understand what what God has for us. Because in this uh, uh, message God uh, gave me, you know, He He wanted us to to find and, and and see some things. So so just just bear with me just for a moment here as we we lay down some some foundation. So here we find uh, in the, at the at the end of chapter one we find that that Moses. Uh, is is just about to be born at, at the end of chapter one. By the that end of that chapter, we find Pharaoh actually saying that he wanted to destroy, Amen. He wanted to destroy uh, the Hebrew males, and he makes this uh, decree. He goes to these two uh, uh, midwives, and he tells them that when they give birth, and, and we'll get into that in a minute, when when the Hebrew uh, women give birth, that he wants them to to, to kill them if they're male, and then save the, the females to the side. And, and it was all because he didn't want them to uh, continue to uh, flourish. Now, we have to understand that within that uh, scripture, it, it lets us know that uh, he, he tried to, to kill them. He tried to stop the birth of, of all these Hebrew kids. Now, if, if we pause just for a second and, and understand something here, the enemy, whenever God has a plan for your life, the enemy will step in. The enemy will try to uh, uh, block and, and try to hinder uh, or destroy you or try to destroy or block the blessing that God has for you. But but we have to understand that, that when God is in control of this thing and when God has a plan for your life or or blessings for your life. The devil can't do anything about it. Now, he can try to uh, block them. He can try to hold them up. But but eventually, they're going to get to uh, uh, get to you, and God is going to allow them things to, to prosper. Now, my thing of it is, is and, and we have to understand that, uh, God, when when the enemy tries to block something that God has placed in your life to do, or God a blessing that God has for you, he knows that if you get that thing, God, uh, you're you're gonna uh, your faith is going to increase in God one, and that you're going to uh, uh, be be greater later on. See, when, when God has a plan for us and the enemy knows uh, that uh, there's something special or, or that God wants to use you, the enemy will try every tactic he can to try to hinder it or block that blessing. 
to try to uh, block your progress. Come on now, we all have some uh, some moments in our life that we found that that uh, uh, certain situations has come and, and we're ready to move or we're ready to do certain things and the enemy comes in to try to halt or block your blessing. The enemy comes in to try to deter you from uh, doing what God has, has already ordained that's going to happen in your life. Uh, I know I'm not the only one that, that the enemy had when God said to me uh, that it was time for me to do X, Y, and Z the enemy raised his head and all that and I have to let you know look the greater the the, the struggle the greater the attack that the enemy gives the greater the blessing God's going to place on you you'll be able to receive that bell I ain't going to get no amens you'll be able to receive that thing when you understand that yes I, I went through what I went through uh, for a reason and, and I understand that the enemy didn't want me to get to this certain spot in my life because he knew that at the end uh, like the word of God said my, my latter days was going to be greater than my former. He understood that if God would give me those things and if God would bless me and, and allow me to accomplish what he has already ordained in my life, he knew that my latter end was going to be greater than my former. And see, the devil don't want us to, to uh, be able to, to get to that moment in, in our life. And, 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 and as the, the story uh, goes on, I, I'm, I'm going to try to stick to the story. But, but uh, oftentimes I got to pause and, and, and let you see something within God's uh, word here. So here we find that Pharaoh saying, look, you know what? I'm going to afflict the children of Israel. I'm going to afflict these Hebrews. Now we have to understand they were under bondage for over 400 and some years. So all they knew was bondage. All they knew uh, was, was serving and, and all those things. They, they, they understood the, the former years when Joseph was there and, and moved everybody into uh, 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 Egypt land and, and moved everybody into Goshen. They understood those. But, but the Bible lets us know that when Joseph went off to sea, a, a, a new Pharaoh came and that knew not of Joseph, that's when they went into bondage. And when uh, Moses gets on the scene here, we find that, that even at his birth, the devil or the enemy was trying to destroy him because he knew what God was going to do later on. So, so as we look here in these, uh, the, the scriptures here, we're going to find that even in chapter 1, Pharaoh makes this decree and says, Look, I want to kill every male that is born to the Hebrews. And then we find that as it uh, goes on and as the uh, story goes on, he goes to these two uh, midwives and he begins to tell them that you need to uh, uh, destroy these uh, uh, male children. But see, they, they feared God more than they feared him. But, but, but we're going to get there. There's, there's some people uh, today that, 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 that know within themselves that, that there, there's a, a struggle, there's a fight there, that, that uh, they know that God has uh, something for them in, in that struggle and that fight and that, that enemy is trying to uh, block it and trying to destroy it and all that. We, I, I said that. We, we have to understand that, that the greater the, the struggle, the greater the, the, the fight is, the, the more God will bless. Come on, let's be reminded of when uh, Jacob was uh, wrestling with the angel of God. He said, look, I can't let you go, God, until you bless me. That there was a blessing he needed from God and it was a, a great struggle that took place. And let me tell you, the enemy is designed to try to rob, kill, and destroy. He's designed to try to attack us on every side to block us from getting where God wants us to be. And he tried to do that with Moses by, by putting in Pharaoh's heart that, you know, the children of Israel was growing too big. That they were they were getting uh, too, too many uh, of them and, and after a while they're going to get so big that they're going to uh, overtake us. See, the devil tries to afflict us in all kinds of ways. Now, now he may be trying to afflict your, your finance because the Bible tells us here in uh, that first chapter, it lets us know that each time Pharaoh would afflict the children of Israel, the Bible said they grew even more. Come on now, somebody better get happy on that. Each time the devil tries to bring you a struggle or a situation, God strengthens you and bless you even more. Can I get an amen? Each time that the devil uh, tried to block all those things that God uh, has for us, uh, God has blessed us even more. He, he tries to afflict our finances. Uh, when uh, he provides us with bills from, from all over the place and unknown uh, bills and, and just bills that pop up from out of nowhere and, and reoccurring harassment bills, uh, he tries to afflict us with those things. Uh, he, the devil tries to attack our family. He, he even tries to attack our health. 
wealth that if he could, our jobs and, and, and all those things. And he even tries to attack our peace of mind. He don't want you to have a sound mind like the Bible tells us. He tries to afflict you. And just like Pharaoh, every time he afflict the children of Israel, those Hebrews, the Bible said they grew more. That God began to bless them more. Even though they were under bondage, even though they were going through what they went through and becoming slaves to the, the Egyptians at that time, they still became uh, got blessed each time that they were afflicted. So on today, I'm here just to let you know uh, you need to talk to your enemy and you need to let your enemy know the more you mess with me, the more you keep messing, the more God is going to be blessing me. So you need to talk to that enemy right now and tell him, I don't care what you throw my way. I know that God is going to bless me and God is going to multiply me each and every time you mess with me. God is going to then multiply my blessings back. Oh, somebody ought to say amen on today. God is just wonderful and God is just awesome. But as we get back into this uh, story, uh, Pharaoh tells the, the midwives. He tells Shifra, uh, Shifra and, and Puna, he tells them, or Pua, he tells them, look, when, when y'all see the, uh, the midwives, or when, when y'all see the, the Hebrew women having a baby, what I want you to do is slay him right there. And, and then they, they said, oh, wait, wait, within themselves. They said, we fear God. Now, now he's asking Hebrew midwives to destroy Hebrew children. Come on. Can, can, can I stop for a second here? See how crazy the enemy is? The enemy tries to use things that God has, uh, has blessed you with to try to destroy you, but he don't realize that, that if, if God gave it to me, it's a part of me, and God knows what he's doing. So, so he tries to get the Hebrew women to destroy the Hebrew males. Crazy. But then we find that the Bible said they feared God more than they feared Pharaoh. Oh, glory to his name. Uh, they feared God so that they said, look, we're, we're not going to destroy him. What we're going to do is come up with a story. We're going to come up with a story to Pharaoh, and we're going to tell Pharaoh, uh, just before we come in, uh, see, you have to understand something about the Hebrew women. They're, they're, they're different from the Egyptians. Uh, uh, the Egyptian women, uh, uh, they, they always needed somebody's help to, to birth the child. But, but these Hebrew women, there's something different or peculiar about them that when they give birth, uh, they, they know how to give birth by themselves without a midwife. And they came up with the story and, and said, look, uh, we, we, we can't can't get there in time to help them birth this thing. Oh, glory to it. Thank you, Lord. Uh, sometimes God births something in you, uh, and you're too busy looking for a midwife to come and help birth that thing out. And God said, I already put in you uh, what you need to do to push that thing. Oh, glory to his name. I'm going to go on with this story. But we have to understand something here. Uh, he was trying to get them to kill them, and they said, no, we're not going to do that. We're, we're going to tell him this story. And then Pharaoh gets even more upset uh, and he tells them, know what you do? Uh, I'm going to make this uh, not, not so much a decree, but he said, what I want y'all to do is when y'all see them, uh, a male child of the Hebrews, uh, he said, I want you to cast them uh, over the cliff. I want you to cast them into the river and drown them. Oh, glory to his name. Let me tell you something. When the enemy can't get you one way, he's going to try another. Oh, glory to his name. Nobody want to say amen. When the enemy tries uh, uh, to, to attack you and wants to hinder your blessing, he's not just going to come one way. He's not just going to say, okay, well, I didn't get him that way uh, uh, no more for me. He's going to come right back around and he's going to try something else. Uh, if I can't get you at the birth canal, he said, then I'm going to get you before you uh, continue to grow in what you're going through. Oh, glory to his name. But here we find that they said, oh, no, we can't do that. We, we fear God, and, and, and we're, we're not going to go through that. The Bible goes on and tells us, and, and we're talking about Moses. I'm just still laying down some foundation. And, and, and Moses here, uh, he, he's being birthed, and his mother tried to hide him because she understood that if someone would see him, they, they was going to drown him or, or kill him. So she tried to hide him for, for as long as she could. But when the Bible said when she couldn't, in chapter 2, when she couldn't uh, hide him any longer, uh, the Bible says she made a little ark. She made an ark and she uh, put some pitch and slime and, and all that in it. And she placed him in there and, and she sent him down on the uh, river Nile because she knew that Pharaoh's daughter would come there and bathe at a certain point in the day. 
So what she did was she said, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to fashion this, this ark like God told Noah to do in, in uh, Noah's time when he said, look, I need you to build an ark so big. And, and he told him, put pitch within and pitch without. He said, so it uh, can sustain and, and so it can float and, and accomplish what I send it. And she did the same thing. She built a little ark, placed uh, Moses in it, and, and then she sent him down the Nile. Now, let, we have to look at this thing here. She sent her baby down the, the, the Nile. She didn't really realize uh, 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 whether he was going to uh, get into the, the eyesight of Pharaoh's daughter. She was in the hopes that he would get into the eyesight of Pharaoh's daughter. Now, the thing we have to see here is she had faith in God to understand, God, I'm sending my, my child down in this uh, uh, basket, down in this ark towards uh, Pharaoh's daughter. And she had faith, I believe, to understand that God was going to protect him because the Bible says she saw something in her son. Oh, glory to his name. The Bible said she saw that he was a goodly uh, child. So she saw something in him. Uh, so she had faith in God uh, to send him on down the river so she can get in the eyesight of Pharaoh's daughter. The Bible goes on and says that when she sent him down, she sent her daughter along with him. To watch on the land and see where the ark was uh, was going, the, the little basket was flowing down. It paused in uh, what the Bible says, some flax, uh, uh, some weeds, if you will. It paused there, and Pharaoh's daughter was bathing, and, and, and for some reason, uh, some uh, happenstance, uh, that basket caught her eye in the corner. And when it caught her eye in the corner, she went over and inquired to see what was in the basket. Oh, glory to his name. So when she went over and she looks down in the basket, we understand that she sees Moses. She stoops down and draws Moses out of the water. She then, uh, when, when, when uh, Moses' sister saw that she had the baby, she then come up and, and she speaks to Pharaoh. I hope y'all don't mind the background story. She, she, she uh, went up to Pharaoh's daughter and she says to her, she says, uh, you want me to uh, find you a woman of the Hebrews to nurse this child? Oh, glory to his name. Can, can I show you something here? When God has a plan in your life, he will position people around you to watch over that blessing, to watch over what's needed to be done. And in the moment in time that you need them, oh, glory to his name, I must be the only one. The moment in time you need them, here they come out of the woodwork and step up and be concerned about you to help steer you in that right direction that God wanted for you to have. So here we find that his sister steps up and says, um, um, I can find you a woman in the Hebrews that can, that can nurse this child. And, and Pharaoh's daughter said, do that. Uh, take, uh, go find me uh, a woman. Now the thing we have to see here is his sister went and got her mother and his mother. And said, uh, uh, Mom, uh, she wants you to come and, and nurse uh, Moses or, or nurse this, this child. Now, how he gets the name Moses uh, is from Pharaoh's daughter. Oh, look at this here. Pharaoh's daughter calls him Moses. Uh, she said, I will name him Moses uh, because I drew him out of the water. So his name means being drawn out of the water. So she names him Moses, uh, and then we go on in the story that he's being nursed by his own mother, and his own mother is now implanting in him his history. Oh, glory to his name. Uh, I, I, I'm just going to breeze through this, uh, uh, this, 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 this chapters here. But we find here, as the story goes on, that, that Moses' mother, she begins to teach him, and, and she begins to uh, rear him up. And you, you can't tell me that she didn't tell him about his history. Because the Bible said in chapters uh, near the end of 2 and 3, the Bible says that Moses went out, and he was uh, wanting to see what was going on with his Hebrew brethren. See, now, if Moses thought he was an Egyptian, he would have just didn't care what was going on. So it lets me to know that his mother was implanting in him what was needed for him to understand who he was. Oh, come on here. Now, if you had a parent that implanted in you who you was, if you had a parent that, that, that reared you and, and told you, I don't care if they was naturally your parent or, or stepped or, 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 or adopted or whatever it is, but if you had somebody that was implanting in you who you are, they was implanting in you some, some uh, important things that you need to know about yourself. Yeah, they told you you are good. Yeah, they told you you are important. Yeah, they, oh, come on, I don't want to quote the movie Help right now. Uh, 
uh, but, but we have to understand that they, and she was important in that little child that you were somebody even though somebody else didn't care about you. So she was telling Moses uh, uh, all about his history that, that in that chapter 3 he went out or chapter 2 he goes out and he looks to see what's going on with his brother. Oh my God. When he gets out there, he sees that an Egyptian is beating on a Hebrew. Moses did what most people would do. Moses looked around, the Bible said, from one side to the other. He saw that nobody was looking. Oh, but can I tell you something? Somebody is always looking. Somebody is always watching. My son used to say that when he was a little child. He used to say, Daddy, he's always watching. And he was letting us know that God was always watching. And let me tell you something. When you don't think they're looking is when they're looking. Oh, glory to his name. The Bible said he went out to see the second time. And two Hebrews came up to him. And they said to him, they said, uh, uh, what are you doing here? Uh, why are you out here? Are you, you coming to slay us like you slayed that Egyptian? Now Moses looked around, didn't see nobody, and he killed the Egyptian for hurting a Hebrew. Now let's look at this thing here. We now see two Hebrews that recognize what Moses did are now confronting Moses. But then the very next uh, 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 chapter or the very next couple of scriptures, it said Pharaoh heard about it. Mm, come on, look at this thing here. Now who could have told Pharaoh but the Hebrews? See, let me tell you something. It's not all the, always uh, those enemies on the outside. It's those very ones that sometimes, oh my God, I know somebody ain't going to like this. Uh, it's some, it's, uh, sometimes it's those ones that's close to us uh, that saw us uh, or can see some things and some blessings uh, that God has for us and jealousy steps in and it begins to get them uh, around up that they now have strife and envy and they go and they try to block your blessing. Moses chased them off. The Bible says, and as it goes on, and we're going to read this, the, the slide through these chapters. The Bible said that Moses then uh, goes back to Jethro, or go back to Rule, that's the place where Jethro and them was staying at in Midian. He goes back there and he talks to Jethro, and they begin, his daughters begin to tell him who Moses was. He defended us and he chased them off and, and him and uh, Jethro get to be friends and, and he gets to know him and Jethro gives him his wife, his oldest daughter named Zipporah. Gives him Zipporah and then they go about, they had some children and, and things of that, but then Moses is now tending to his father-in-law's flock. Oh, we're going to get there. We're going to get there because the, 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 the title that God had uh, originally gave me was uh, Here Am I. Here am I going to meet that I am that I am. Here am I going to meet the I am that I am. We'll see that in a minute. So look at this thing here. Moses is out there. He's feeding his sheep. He's feeding and watering the sheep. And all of a sudden, he sees something out the corner of his eye. Now, come on, I know we all Bible scholars, I, uh, but, but just in case somebody is tuning in that, that never really seen the, the totality of Moses' story, uh, just, just bear with me for a moment, uh, those of us who, who know. Well, Moses is going about uh, feeding the flock of his father-in-law, and the story goes on and says that he looked and seen something out the corner of his eye. When he looked and seen it out the corner of his eye, uh, he, he went and he sort of, uh, inquired about that thing. He went and said, uh, let me see what's going on here. Let me see exactly uh, what's actually happening here. He, he goes on and, and, and the Bible says that he goes up to this place. Mm, mm, mm. Goes up to this place where this bush is burning. He finds himself standing there. And as he's approaching, he hears out of the, 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 just a, a faint voice saying to him, Moses, Moses. And Moses turned and he understood what was going on and, and he said, here am I. He said, here am I. 
Meaning, uh, yes, I'm, I'm here, Lord. He, he understood that that bush represented the, the, uh, the God, the creator. And then when he got close, the Bible said that he said, take off your, your sandals because where you're standing is on holy ground. See, this this is where the, the, the uh, here I am is getting ready to meet the, the great I am. We, we, we got to look at that thing. And when he came up, he told him, take your shoes off because where you're standing is holy ground. And Moses gets there and, he, and he's standing before God and, and he then bows himself down and hides his face because he was, he was so in shock and all that he was standing in the presence of God. And God began to talk to Moses and said, know what I need you to do? I need you to go back to Egypt. Oh, watch this thing here. I need you to go back to Egypt and tell that new Pharaoh, because the Bible lets us know, if you read it, it said that those ones who sought to kill Moses was that, that, that Pharaoh uh, had, had already uh, went off the scene. So, so we have to look at this thing. So he's sending Moses back there, and he's telling Moses, what you do is, I want you to tell that Pharaoh, let my people go. Oh, here we go. So when we get there, when, when, when Moses is, is hammering and hauling, and, and let me tell you something, that's just like us. When God has a plan for us, and when God has a job or assignment for us, we try to make all kinds of excuses why we can't do it. We try to make all kinds of excuses of why it's going to be difficult for us to do it. Moses began to bring up, oh, well, I got stumbling lips. I, I stutter too much, God. God said, don't worry about that. I got that covered. Moses began to think again, well, well, well if I go to them, uh, uh, they're going to ask me uh, who sent me, and, and what, what am I going to tell them then, uh, God? And, and he said, look, I got that covered too. All you got to do is, is let them know that, 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 that I sent you. All you got to do is, is, is let them know that, that I called you to, to go to them and, and I told you to, to tell them that I am that I am that is here to deliver them. So Moses, uh, after making all those excuses uh, and after God has wiped all those excuses away, Moses then goes back. Uh, and, and, and see, I have to uh, tell you something here. I believe the reason why Moses really started those excuses uh, is because he knew that they was after his life in Egypt. Mm. He knew that they was uh, uh, looking to destroy him in Egypt, but we understand that 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 that, that Pharaoh was gone, and and the, the new uh, rising Pharaoh came up, uh, uh, and 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 that was all just you know uh, washed away, if you will, or, or forgotten. And now the new plan was in place. So when Moses uh, uh, was was battling with God, saying, "Look, I, I don't want to go," it's because he knew that in that land that there was some danger there. But see, God will wipe that stuff away and God will give you holy boldness to step out and go where he tells you to go at the moment he tells you to go. Do I have a few witnesses that, that at one particular moment you knew that any given moment that if I go on this scene or if I uh, uh, embark in this task uh, that the enemy is going to try to destroy me. But did you say uh, like others in the Bible, though he slay me, yet will I serve him? Did you have that type of mentality down within your spirit? Did you have that type of willpower and faith in God to say, God, I'm going to go simply because you said it. And God said, no what? Uh, because you said you're going to go. I'm going to bless you. Remove every obstacle that you have that will hinder or try to block your blessing. Did I not say that's what the enemy tries to do? He tries to block your blessing. As the story goes on, and I got to hurry up this thing. As the story goes on, Moses then goes back to Egypt. He goes to Egypt and he then begins to tell that Pharaoh and, and uh, that, that God was going ready to uh, tell him to let his people go. But see, what God did with Moses, he said, even when you go, Moses, I want you to understand something here. I give you some signs. This rod that's in your hand, he said, when you cast it down, it's going to turn into a snake. When, when it falls on the ground, it's going to become a snake. And, and, and then I'm going to give you another sign. When you stretch forth your hand, it's going to become leprous. And when you bring it back, it's going to be whole again. He gave Moses all kinds of signs that would show the children of Israel just that this, he was true and that he was on assignment by the true and living God. 
But of course, Pharaoh and the enemy tries to trick us with their tactics. Uh, he, uh, the uh, Pharaoh said, look, I have magicians too that, that can do the same thing. Uh, uh, let's cast down our rods and, 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 and watch them turn into snakes. Uh, the two magicians cast down their rods uh, and they turned into snakes too. And the Bible said Moses' snake uh, uh, ate up their snake uh, and he picks his rod back up and it turned into a... See, when you have God on your side and you have the true and living God, no, no copies or imitations can, can stand up for what God has for you. Oh, glory to his name. And, and Moses knew in whom he served. Uh, and he said, I'm not worried about that. And as the story goes on, Pharaoh's heart got hardened by God. And God didn't, uh, uh, Pharaoh didn't allow his people to go. So God tells him, oh, I hope y'all don't mind this. Uh, God tells him uh, to send forth these uh, ten plagues into Egypt. And by each plague, uh, Pharaoh's uh, heart is going to continue to be hardened. But these plagues is going to uh, show him that I am God. Oh, glory to his name. Oh, we can finish this thing in a second. But when we get to this point, uh, uh, Moses is there and he's telling them uh, over and over, uh, let my people go, let my people go. By the end of the story, we know that Pharaoh let him go after the, the, the death plague came in. After that Passover plague that, that uh, they had to wipe uh, blood on the posts and, and all that. After that death plague came and God uh, destroyed the firstborn in every household and every beast and all that. And then they got uh, out of Egypt uh, with uh, jewelry and jewels and all those things. Uh, they borrowed from the Egyptians because uh, God wanted them to go out in style. Mm -hmm. So Pharaoh lets them go. They get out to the Red Sea or they get out on their journey and, and they, they get hungry, of course. They get hungry in the wilderness. They, they get hungry uh, in their trek along. But they get out to this Red Sea, the Bible said, and Pharaoh gets so enraged that he sends forth his chariots and army and they pursue uh, uh, Moses and the children of Israel. They get them between what we call a rock and a hard place. They get them between two mountains uh, and the Red Sea before them. Uh, and those same ones, uh, when they saw Pharaoh coming, those same ones within the group that just got uh, uh, deliberated by God uh, or released from bondage by God, those same ones uh, sat within themselves. See, you got to watch who you have around you. Because sometimes when things get hot and heavy, those are the ones that cut out on you. But here we find those same ones uh, that Moses had just freed by the power of God, said we should have stayed in Egypt. We should have stayed in bondage. Let me tell you something about that. When you have that bondage mentality, you're going to always look to be a servant. Mm. But see, here we find that Moses said, look, there's something better on the other side of this Red Sea. If you would just stand still for a moment and see the salvation of God, God is getting ready to bless us. And the Bible said God sent a pillar of fire that came down that, that buffered between Pharaoh and the children of Israel. Oh, somebody ought to get happy here. In the midst of the enemy pursuing you, God is only going to allow him to get so close to you. He's going to set up a, a, a pillow of fire or as I like to say lift up a standard against the enemy he's going to lift that standard that, that blocking point and, and not going to let the enemy get to you until the task is done until you get to the other side oh, can I get an amen here when you're going through something God said I'm not going to allow the enemy to destroy you I'm going to allow you to see this and use this for a victory praise later on and you will get to the other side so the Bible goes on and tells us in that Exodus, uh, that Moses raised his rod, the Red Sea opened up. Uh, see, I understand we heard this story before, but some people may have never known this. Uh, the Red Sea opened up. Uh, God made a highway through the Red Sea. Uh, he allowed them to walk over, the Bible said, on dry land. Uh, that's something amazing by itself. Uh, the sea is full of water, uh, and when you move some water away, that what, what the water was touching is wet. Uh, but God spread it, the Red Sea, uh, and they walked over on dry land. Uh, Pharaoh tried to pursue them. Uh, God removed that block or that hindrance uh, and let the enemy try to pursue them. Uh, sometimes God will remove that block uh, and let the enemy try to pursue you uh, because God knows that you already made it through. Mm, glory. You already made it through the blessing stage. Uh, oh, glory to his name. Uh, so when we get to the story, Pharaoh and them gets in the midst of the uh, water and the Bible said the seas closed on them. Uh, but that wasn't the end of their story. <coughs> Moses' story. When they got on the other side they go through the 
the wilderness. They're going on their track to the promised land. We find that Moses and them find themselves hungry. The children of Israel, they sought begging for uh, food. We should have stayed in Egypt. This is what they said, y'all. We should have stayed in Egypt. And we, we had our master's flesh pots we could have ate. We had our master uh, the scraps that they would allow us to eat. We had food enough to eat. But we're now out in this wilderness. We don't have any food. The Bible said Moses talked to God. Oh, my glory. It's something about the man or woman of God talking to the Father. He talked to God because, see, Moses knew who the I am was. Moses knew who that I am was now. He understood who God was. So the Bible says that Moses spoke to God, and God said, I'm going to send manna from heaven. I'm going to send bread down for y'all to eat. I'm going to send it daily. What y'all don't have to do is store it up. But just like those same folks that wanted to turn around, those same greedy folks that want more, 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 they grabbed down and they tried to store some up. The Bible said it rotted and spoiled. It made them sick. And God just simply let Moses know they don't have to store it up. I'm going to sustain them and provide for them fresh, new, hot, warm bread each and every morning. So why do I want some day old bread? Why I want some stale stuff? Oh, glory to his name. Somebody better get happy here. God has some new things in store for your life. God said he ain't giving you no stale stuff. God said I'm giving you fresh. I'm giving you something good, some sustenance. Oh, give me a couple more minutes, please. We find ourselves in this story that they even got to the point where they said, yes, bread is good, but we want some uh, meat to come through here. And the Bible said that God sent the quails to come into that region. Now, what's miraculous about this thing is quail hasn't come in that region before. But the Bible lets us know that God sent quail for them to eat. All they had to do, the quail didn't try to fly off. The quail just sat there and waited for them to come and get them. And they prepared the quail and they had bread and meat. But see, we ain't satisfied. Come on now, y'all know what I'm talking about. We ain't satisfied unless we can wash that thing down. They go back to Moses. They say, Moses, we eating bread. We're eating the meat. But Moses, where is something for us to drink? Moses said, y'all wretched people. Y'all getting on my last nerve. Oh, yes, he did. He said, y'all getting on my nerves, in my words. And he says, what am I do? God said, what you do, Moses, is, 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 is speak to the rock and tell the rock to bring forth water. Mm, glory to man, there's so much here. Speak to the rock and, and tell the rock to bring forth some water. And Moses, uh, uh, being frustrated in his spirit, uh, Moses go and slaps the rock with the staff. Uh, yes, water came out, uh, but that thing displeased God. Uh, and let me tell you, can I just jump to this? Uh, that was one of the reasons why Moses didn't make it over or be able to see the promised land as he should have. Because of that moment. But let me get back to this thing. He gave them water in the wilderness. Now all they had to do was wait for Moses when he got to the certain point before they was getting ready to go over into uh, 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 the, the Canaan land. All they had to do was wait for Moses to come back. God said, Moses, I need you to come up here. See, we understand the first call of God. God called Moses uh, when he was in the, uh, the, the, the foot uh, hills, uh, and he called Moses when he was in Midian, and he said, Moses, Moses, and he said, here am I. He called him, and he put him on the assignment. Now, this second call, when he called Moses again, he said to Moses, come up here, because the children are going ready to end into a new promised land, and when they get over there, we need some rules to govern them. So he tells Moses to go up to the Mount Sinai. Moses goes up to Mount Sinai, leaving Aaron in charge, leaving them in charge down there. He goes up there and receives the Ten Commandments and some other laws. Moses is getting these laws from God to govern his people to bring them in. Moses comes down after God said, Moses, them people down there cutting the fool. He said what they did was all that gold and jewelry that I told them to take from the children of Israel, uh, they done fashioned a calf, a golden calf, uh, and they're down there worshiping this golden calf. Moses gets so enraged within himself. Uh, see, the children of Israel was copycats. They always wanted what somebody else had. 
when they travel through land to land to get to this world, that's why it took them 40 years, y'all. They wanted what everybody else had, and God had to hold up the process until they got straight again to get them where they needed to be. Oh, come on here. Let me put a pen here for you. Sometimes God says, uh, I want you to do X, Y, and Z, and it should only take you uh, two or three days to do it, and then you don't do X, Y, and Z the way God tells you to do it. You worried about what somebody else is doing and how they did it, and God said, you know what? Uh, you holding up the process, so now it's taking you two, three years. Oh, glory to his name. Come on, let me finish this thing here. The Bible said that Moses goes down with the Ten Commandments, sees them, the two tablets that God himself fashioned. God hewed these two ta uh, tablets out. God wrote on these, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, on these tablets. We find that Moses goes down, see the children of Israel, worshiping this golden calf, told Aaron, give us something to worship. Aaron helps them fashion this calf. They begin to worship this calf. When Moses sees this golden calf, Moses takes the Ten Commandments again, frustrated in his spirit. And Moses throws the Ten Commandments down, uh, cracks them all up. Uh, and then Moses, well, by way of punishment to them, takes the golden calf, grinds it up. Oh, glory. Grinds it up into some powder, mingled and mixed it with uh, uh, what they needed to eat and fed it to them. And the Bible said they all got sick. Oh, can I show you this here? Sometimes uh, that thing in which we've gotten ourselves into, God allows for us to eat that thing. Oh, glory to his name. He allows for us to eat that thing. Yes, I got out there. Yes, I, I disobeyed and I, I broke the rules and commandments. Now I got to eat this thing. And that thing comes and that thing hurts my belly and my stomach. And it makes me sick. And then I understand that I learned from what my mistake was. So when Moses goes back up to the Mount Sinai, he had to go back. I said, come on back up here, Moses. Oh, glory to his name. He said, come on back up here. He said, what I need for you to do now is you hew out two stones. You hew out two tablets. And you carry them up to Sinai. And in this moment, Moses is there 40 days. And I'm closing. 40 days and 40 nights. The Bible said that there was a change. There was something that happened to Moses on that second trip up to that mountain. The Bible said Moses was standing in the very presence of God. Let me put this down. Moses was standing in the very presence of God for 40 days and 40 nights. You talk, I'm talking about something here. He was in the presence of God himself that fashioned himself in whatever form it was. And that form was still full of glory that when Moses was looking upon him with his head and face bowed down. See, see the thing about it is you can't look on God in his totality. Or you would die. Moses knew that. But the thing that we have to understand. The sun don't have to necessarily beat directly on us. For us to feel its effects. Oh glory. So what was going on here. Is Moses was in the presence of God. Uh, not looking at God. Because he understood that if I look at God. That I can't see him in this totality of flesh. That's why the Bible lets us know. That when we die. We're going to be changed. In a twinkle in the moment of the eye. We shall be like him. We have to be changed. We can't go up there with this flesh. Because this flesh can't handle what we're going to see. Oh glory. Man, this thing is good. But when we look at this thing here, Moses is there 40 days and 40 nights. And that glory that's radiating off of God is all over Moses. Moses come down again from that mountain. When he comes down from the mountain, he comes with the Ten Commandments and the laws that's going to govern them. But the Bible said that something happened to Moses' continent. Something happened to him that he was now glowing. He now had a glow upon him. Now, there's something that you have to understand is when you're in the presence of God, there is a spiritual glow that come upon you. But when Moses was in direct contact with God, and for 40 days and 40 nights, that when he came down, his face glowed, that they got so scared at what they were looking at uh, that Moses had to cover himself. Uh, he had to cover that anointing. Oh, glory is so much in here. He had to cover that anointing that God had just placed on him because those ones down there wasn't ready for it. Oh, my God. 
When God has anointed you so, there is some around you that are not ready for that anointing. And when that anointing is falling fresh on you, those ones around you are fearful and scared and don't understand. It. And what the Bible said, it looks like foolishness to them when we praise in God. It looks like foolishness to them when we're speaking in unknown tongues. It looks like foolishness to them when we're trusting and believing on God. But Moses came down and covered his face when he talked to them. But when he went back into the makeshift uh, tabernacle, he would uncover himself uh, to bask more in the sun. Oh, glory. And when he did this, uh, he kept receiving a change from God. I got to close it here. But what you have to understand is we get to that same moment Moses did. Here am I, God. I'm just waiting to meet the I am that I am. Now, we've always preached a, a, a message on the I am that I am. But we have to understand something here. Moses knew who that I am was at the end. He knew that God said, just tell him I am that I am. I'm here today to tell you that whenever you need God, no matter what the situation is, all you have to do is first understand here am I God. I'm coming to you, God, as humble as I know how. I'm coming to you, God, because I need you to bless and move. God, you know all about my situation. God, you know everything that I'm going through. And God, I need for you to move by your spirit. And God, I don't need to understand the totality of who you are. But all I need to know, God, is that you are that same I am that I am that you told Moses back in the day. And Malachi picked it up and said, you're the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. I need you to step in. God said, I'll be whatever you need me to be, but to be at any time you need me. So on today, I dare you to holler out. I plead for you to holler out to the I am. Lord, come into my life. God, bless me like never before. God, I understand my, my, my stress and the things that I'm going through. I'm going to be greater blessed in the end. But God help me right now oh glory to his name do anybody that they need hallelujah the I am that I am oh hallelujah I gotta close I gotta close I gotta close on today let's, let's just bow our heads let's go right to our bow our heads <clears throat> let's bow our heads Father God in the name of Jesus Lord we thank you Lord we thank you for this word on today God we thank you for the excitement of your word God, because as reading the scriptures and understanding, dear God, that you are that I am that I am. Lord, you are whatever I need you to be. You are whatever we need you to be on today. God, and for that reason, dear God, we give you praise. For that reason, God, we understand that we have hope, God. For that reason, God, our faith is growing stronger in you, God. That at any given moment in time that the enemy rise up, God, that you said that you would fix it, you would restore it, God. Lord, we thank you on today that the enemy tried to attack certain things in our life. But we serve a decree right now to that enemy. We tell that enemy, you shall flee. In the name of Jesus, you got to go on today. In the name of Jesus, everything that you're trying to do, you got to go on today, you enemy. Lord, we just thank you right now for your blessing. God, we thank you right now, God, for your glory. God, each and every one, God, that's listening. God, we ask a special blessing in their life. God, I don't know what it is, God, but I know you understand and you know all things. Lord, because that's part of who you are. You're all-knowing. You're omniscient, God. God, we understand that you're all-powerful. You're omnipotent, God. We know that you exist everywhere, God. So, God, we just ask, Lord, that you would just bless your people. God, I thank you on today for this word. I thank you on today, God, for just revealing to us what you have. God, we just ask that you bless each and every one that's still suffering with this COVID. God, we ask that you bless like never before. Touch them, God, in a special way, God. Open up their lungs, God. Remove and lower fevers, God. In the name of Jesus. Now is the time, God. Now is the time, God. We need you now. So, God, we ask right now, Lord, that you touch the unsaved. Touch the unsaved right now, God. Loud to cry out, what must I do to be saved? God, and then draw near to them. You said all they have to do is believe. Believe on Jesus' name. And they shall be saved. So God, save them. 
God, and we thank you. We thank you again, God, for your blessing. God, I ask this prayer in your mighty name, Jesus. Amen. Come on, come on. Look at somebody and tell them you love them. Mean it in your heart. God bless you.